Why well, this might be the most disrespected job on earth. This should uh this should be very interesting, yeah. <laughs> um I think I have a good guess on what this job is. I'm assuming it's something zoo related, but I guess I'll find out when we get in. Oh and before I get into this video, I just wanna say how annoyed I am that uh I actually recorded a reaction to Casual Geographic's last video where he's going over bears and their and their rate on how likely they are to end you, and I accidentally deleted the recording. <laughs> I was clearing up space, and I accidentally deleted that with it, and I was like, oh my god. And that's why I didn't get a video on that. We would have gotten a video out for that, but... <laughs> I'm just... I am just so clumsy when it comes to deleting space, apparently. Like, oh my god. <laughs> <sighs> So I'm gonna react to this one. So yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, let's just uh, jump straight in then, shall we? All right, let's see what this is about. <laughs> so there's a lot of talk about man versus bear. Would you choose the man? Would you choose the bear? How about we talk about that time women chose gorillas? <laughs> this is Shibani. Shibani is a 27 year old living in the Hiyashiyama Zoo in Nagoya, Japan, okay. where his face card went viral and caused a direct increase in the number of female visitors. Call him George the way he had these women curious. Last name Clooney, because that's the main guy they compared him to. Oh, and if you couldn't tell, Shibani is also a 400 plus pound primate with a perpetual pump. Not only that, he's a loyal husband with two wives and children. That's a family man being lusted after. Some mm. of the words used to describe him were punky, heartthrob, metrosexual, spornosexual. I didn't even know what that meant. Spornosexual? I'm gonna have to Google that. Okay, this is the first thing that popped up for spornosexual. Spornosexual is a blend of sports and the clipping porno compounded with sexual. I'm... No, this is off of Wikipedia. Then They totally messed up the grammar on this. I... <laughs> Is there a better definition? <laughs> and do I want to know? Okay, I don't know how accurate this one is because it's off of Urban Dictionary. A new breed of metrosexual, especially in the sports, porn, <laughs> big strategically placed tattoos and fitness of his own body. Um, okay, I, okay. I don't know how true any of that is. Who knows, maybe Casual Geographic is about to say what it is because I just paused it at the right time. The only thing I'm going to say is that these women that are attracted to this gorilla are definitely furries. They're definitely furries. They're probably beyond that's actually. Yeah. One article even asked, quote, would you go for a romp in the jungle with Shabani? No. Ha! A sinful yeah. liaison, that's Harambe. At women hot and bothered, that's Femme Flambe. Call him Susan B. Anthony the way he had women showing up to the poll. Just kidding. Real ones know gorillas ain't packing anything but a room. But yeah, Shabani's looks transcended the laws of nature. And if I had a nickel for every time a woman's feelings towards a gorilla made headlines, I'd have two nickels, <laughs> which is too many more than I should have. Yeah, I... <laughs> yeah, I think one was already enough. <laughs> one woman was a frequent visitor at the Dijar de Blijdorp Zoo in the Netherlands, and her favorite was a silverback named Bakido. Up to four times a week, she'd find him, make direct eye contact, and smile. I'm not even going to explain how much of a gorilla middle finger that is. Keepers try to warn her, but... Yeah, uh, I'm... I don't remember remember where I heard it from. I think it was, I think it was Casual Geographic, another video, but yeah, I heard that, that, uh, you don't want to smile at them, and you sure as shit don't want to beat your chest at them. But she didn't listen. Her and Bikido, they, they had a connection. Oh, they connected, all right. <laughs> One day, she smiled again and called him constipated because Bikido was not letting that shit slide. Bikido broke out and would proceed to put the beats on her like afro music, oh. and he jumped over a water-filled ditch to do it. Gorillas hate water. <laughs> Kido was fed up. <laughs> <laughs> He was sick of her shit. <laughs> he was like, I will. <laughs> he was like, I will not be sexualized by this furry anymore. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> but yeah, that's how you know you're pissed, <laughs> or someone's pissed, whenever they go do go through sh deal with something they fucking hate. <laughs> like, <laughs> holy shit. <laughs> And the fact that she did that a lot, like, oh yeah, there there was definitely a connection. A grudge connection. He, he held a fucking grudge against her bitch ass. <laughs> oh, good lord. <laughs> oh, man. He, he came up. He, he ran up on her and said, square up or get beat up. <laughs> 
Oh, good lord. <laughs> went from bringing in women, like... Went, went from bringing in women to beating them up. He... <laughs> Maybe he's a Chris Brown friend. <laughs> oh, good lord. Well. <laughs> uh. Was calmly escorted back home where he lived well for another 16 years until he passed away in April of 2023. His get back on his biggest fan slash op was immortalized as a word of the year. And the woman, who I originally felt. I want to read this. Get back on his biggest fan slash op was immortalized as a word of the year. Do I want to try pronouncing this or am I going to have a stroke? Was voted best new Dutch word of 2008 in an online poll organized by the Van Dale Dictionary. This word, is, or the word is derived from Gorilla Bokito, Bokito, whatever, who escaped from his Rotterdam Zoo enclosure last year to savage a woman. It means resistance to destructive behavior and vandalism. Coma drinking? Drinking yourself into a stupor was voted the second most popular new word. Okay. Okay, um, good to know. And the woman, who I originally felt bad for, apparently didn't get hit hard enough. <laughs> God, I don't know my first- Hold on, let me read this. Hold on. Who I originally felt bad for, apparently didn't- Hold on. Hey. I wanna read this whole article. Give me a sec. A 57, a 57 year old Dutch woman who was attacked by a 400 pound gorilla at a Rotterdam Zoo said the ape was still her favorite, even though she felt she was going to die when he bit her. I go to the zoo almost every day with my husband and we're always going to see Bokido. I even have pictures and videos from Berlin when he was only four months old. The woman told Dutch Mass Circulation Daily Telegraph. He is and remains my darling, the paper quoted the woman as saying from her hospital bed where she's being treated for bite wounds and a broken arm and wrist. The 11-year-old male gorilla burst out of its enclosure on Friday and went on a rampage in the zoo's cafeteria for be before being recaptured. <laughs> yeah, she clearly... <laughs> Yeah, she she did not learn her lesson at all. He did not learn a lesson. That or he beat her up so hard that she got brain damage. Yeah. <laughs> One of the two happened. He didn't get hit hard enough. So if y'all don't know, my first aspiration in life was to be a zookeeper. I even had a state-of-the-art custom virtual simulator to prepare. Yeah, that dream flatlined pretty quick. For dream flatlined pretty quick. For reasons. But this Yeah, go back. I had to pause the video because my dog some virtual yeah, that is, uh, not that great of a salary. Mm. Yeah, that ain't great. That is not great. But this video is going to be about probably what my life would look like as a zookeeper. The weird stories, the dirty secrets, and the random trivia oh. the average person would probably know nothing about. Like, what is the most dangerous <laughs> animal in the zoo? Like, actually, the answer. <laughs> I remember seeing that video. <laughs> It is so funny, and th this guy that this guy has some of the, one of the biggest pair of balls in the world to slap a fucking hippo of all things, and one that looks like it's about to bust out of its fucking enclosure too. Like, I like, know Jesus nothing Christ. about. Like, what is the most dangerous animal in the zoo? Like, actually, the answer just might surprise you. Uh, actually, probably not. Born Free USA has a database where you can look up incidents involving exotic animals in America. And okay. if you search up animal attacks by any species in any state in an AZA accredited zoo, you'll see that the number one culprit are big cats. Oh, because out of 101 really? recorded injuries, I I was going to I was going to predict it would be uh, chimpanzees or something or chimps or some form of chimp or monkey, some form of monkey. I thought that's what it was going to be. I guess it's big cats. It caused 46 or 38 percent. Elephants were second at just over 17 percent. Yeah, that's right. The proved anything is that a lot of them had it coming, which is probably why primates earned bronze in brutality at 14 percent. Reptiles like Komodo dragons and bears like pandas got just over 4 percent each. 9 percent were marine attacks by animals like orcas, dolphins, and stingrays, and the remaining 13 percent were just other. Other being something like a kid falling into a rhino enclosure or a woman climbing into a giraffe pen and nearly getting kicked by the census. Now take away. <laughs> Rhino enclosure or a woman climbing into a giraffe pen and nearly getting kicked oh. off the census. <laughs> uh, he wasn't having that. He was like, you better get the fuck away from me. <laughs> now, take it with a grain of salt, because I thought for sure zebras would be up there, but they weren't even on the list. And oh, I yeah, know zebras are pretty crazy, aren't they? For a fact, at least a couple should. But oh, these yeah. are attacks. I want to know what Zuby's most likely to put a halo on my head. 
Well, in the same database, if you looked at every time a person got put on a shirt at a zoo, accredited or not, big cats did it over 40% of the time, mm. with elephants at a hair under 30, and surprisingly, bears barely even scratched at less than 9%. Mm. But here's the thing, if you look at non-accredited zoos, the big cat number grows to 47%, with bears and elephants at 16 apiece. Mm. And lastly, in accredited zoos, elephants actually took the lead at 47%, big cats were the suspect 33% mm. of the time, and bears weren't even on the board. Huh, so if you're a zookeeper neat. at a zoo that actually has its stuff together, statistically, if there's any animal that erases you, it's gonna be an elephant. And if the zoo's suspect, the best believe a big cat. I don't know if I saw that right or not, but I ain't going back to say that. That might be your downfall. But also remember, if it does happen, it'll probably be your fault or your co-workers. Mm. Now, if you work at a zoo long enough, eventually some animal's gonna escape. Whether it's yeah. a minor inconvenience like a bunch of meerkats, or a code red dead the rights and merc on site like a chimpanzee. Yeah, it's gonna happen, and the best reaction is proaction, so some zoos do- I can only imagine what it would be like to be in this situation. That is not a situation I would want to be in, like... <laughs> if I somehow ended up working for a zoo, for some whatever reason, I ain't working there without a shotgun on me, okay? Like, you're giving me one super-powered, built-for-taking-out, big-ass animals shotgun if I am to ever work in a zoo. <laughs> okay, in case something like this happens, okay? Because I ain't... <laughs> I ain't having that. Who escaped animal drills, but instead of actual animals, yeah. Yeah. One Japanese zoo will have workers cosplaying as an animal taking a cue from Madagascar and breaking out. Thank God, because I'm not even going to tell you what I thought this was. What the heck? But it's a pretty harmless way to remind everyone what to do when an animal gets out. All that right. being said, this would be a tragic time to not be sober at the zoo. But what animal's the most likely to escape? In my non-professional online opinion, there's two. If you want to test how good a spot is at keeping the animal in, you should probably hire the man of the forest or the orangutan. Fu Manchu was an orang that nearly got an entire staff fired because there was a solid week where they would show up to work and the entire orangutan posse would be posted up outside. About a week was how long it took for them to realize that Fu had snagged a wire, hid it in his mouth most of the day, and used it to pick his enclosure lock when no one was looking. And Ken Allen was a hairy Houdini who got out so many times that the zoo had to hire rock climbers to find every possible point of exit. Because they didn't know how he got out and Ken for sure wasn't about to tell him. And what did he do with all this freedom? Well, when he wasn't wandering the zoo looking at animals like everyone else, he was pelting rocks at another O-Rang named Otis, because even a 95% vegetarian can make room for beef. The other animal's the red panda. Do oh, your right. homework on how hard it is to keep this red-faced raccoon in. Red, red pandas are fucking adorable, by the way. They just are. I mean, just look at this thing. Like, how adorable is this little fucker? A quick Google search will tell you that a red panda escape has made the news at least once in 1978, 2005, 2007, 2008, 2009, 2012, 2013, and you know what? Probably more. My favorite was Red Panda Rusty slipping out the Smithsonian and walking the streets of Washington, D.C. completely unbothered. So yeah, if your job's keeping a ninja panda or a Cheeto-flavored gorilla in check, you're gonna have a bad time. But yeah. some animals are a great time to work with, and it's often not the ones you'd expect. Rhinos are legally blind trauma tanks that'll buck up to a butterfly. In a zoo, it's a two-ton Labrador with the personality of a lap dog, Aww. and they put the zoo in zoomies. Turkey <laughs> vultures are unironically like precocious toddlers that'll follow their favorite keeper around and play games with them. And mm. cheetahs might just be the most people-proof predator of them all. In fact, almost too much for their own good. <laughs> cheetahs get treated like the that's be the most people-proof predator of them all. In fact, almost too much for their own good. I would love that. I would love the pet of cheetah. And there's two more right here. I didn't even realize. I thought there were blankets. There's two more. Good. Cheetahs get treated like the doormat of the savannah, and their life doesn't become a cakewalk in captivity. Yeah. Oftentimes, the yeah, that is true. I believe uh, the way Casual Geographic said it is that uh, cheetahs are really fast, and that's it. They put all of their scope points in the speed and nothing else. Yeah, I don't remember what video you said that in, but no. The grown house cat is too anxious to even think about making more cheetahs. So. Some cheetahs get emotional support dogs. Aww. So the dogs are assigned to the cheetahs as cubs, and the idea is they become a bonded pair with the cheetah seeing Fido as a role model to mirror and take social cues from. Oh, it's literal emotional support, because if the introvert cat sees that the dog isn't stressed or pressed, it allows them to chill out, or at least enough to motivate them to multiply without a calculator. And to make it even more wholesome, a lot of zoos like the one in San Diego will use dogs rescued from kill shelters. Oh. Definitely one of the top five animal friendships. It's not even the only one in San Diego. This is Zari the Zebra, also from the San Diego Zoo. And this is her best friend, Sophia. You see, Zari doesn't just live there. She's one of the ambassadors for the zoo, spreading smiles and awareness. But I'm also guessing you can't really have your ambassador around other zebras, cause let's just say that might not be the best influence. 
So in comes Sophia, a miniature Mediterranean donkey and Zari's roommate and best friend. To say they're inseparable would be a massive understatement. And while I can't exactly tell you who's influencing who, just know Zari and Sophia give any cheetah dog duo a run for their money. Mm. Now, speaking of role models, have you seen this video of a panda struggling to break bamboo? <laughs> well, that's Mang Er, and he's not struggling. The story goes, he was hand raised by humans his entire life, and while a 250 pound bear might have no problem snapping sticks, a weaker human will. So apparently years of watching his surrogates get humbled by a bamboo somehow taught him that that face is necessary to break it. You can even find videos where he breaks it, starts eating, realizes he forgot to struggle just to grimace and continue. Pandas are a lot of things and apparently Good as Simon Says is one of them. They're also by far the most expensive animal you'll see in a zoo. Any American zoo that wants a panda will have to pay a small annual leasing fee of up to a million dollars, along with 600,000 for every cub born there. Add the millions to build their enclosures and the thousands spent feeding them, and the black and white bamboo bear is about five times more expensive than second place. And that's literally Jesus. the biggest thing alive with legs. And best believe they know it, you might <laughs> never meet a more high maintenance mammal. In 2014, the Chengdu research base set up a live stream so viewers could watch expecting mother, I oh, these names are killing me, I Hin bring another panda into the world. It was then canceled. You and me both, man, these. <laughs> Like, I feel like if you put a list of all these words that I had to pronounce, like, I'd have to, I like, I'm pretty sure I would have a stroke. Like, I'm pretty sure I would. Like, I, I it's just, ugh. Reminds me of a time where I, when I was in school and for some reason they wanted to test us on, like, how good our pronunciation was. And mine was fine. It's just that I just had... <laughs> Well, I don't have a, or at least no diagnosed speech impediment, so I'm not even going to say that. And for some reason, they were just like, not only are we going to give you words to test your pronunciation, we're only going to give you half words. And saying it, I, like, I felt like I was having a stroke just saying all of those half words, too. And I was like, I was like, <laughs> and I was like, I look like an idiot. And the reason I said that is because there was a bunch of other kids in the room, too, who were waiting for their turn. I was like, I, not only do we all got to do this, we got to do this in front of everyone else. And I was the first. I was picked to go first. I was like, come on, really? Really? <sighs> like, come on. But yeah, I'd probably need someone to help me pronounce all these other names. Otherwise, I am I'm probably going to have a stroke. Because <laughs> Jesus. So after it was discovered, she had faked her pregnancy. Somehow, the same animal that got its brain nerfed by nature figured out that if they can play pregnant even after the hormones wear off, they can finesse preferential treatment. And they're not wrong, any future mother pandas are moved to a single with AC, they get round the clock care, and more fruits and bamboo. Quite frankly, huh. I don't blame the bears for working smarter. Yeah. And it gets even crazier. Did you know pandas can be bougie? Mei Lun and Mei Hun were two pandas born and raised in the Atlanta Zoo, but were sent back to China in 2013. The only problem? They refused to eat any traditional Chinese meals, only American. They were not rocking with the Wawa Thao. They wanted biscuits and cookies. And pandas aren't even the only ones to pull some stuff like this. Japan's Akone En was used to feeding their residents Aji, or Japanese horse mackerel. But thanks to inflation, they decided to cut costs by switching to a cheaper alternative. Saba. And wouldn't you know, the penguin with king in its name was not about to eat like a peasant since them and the otters refused to substitute. You see, that's the part of zookeeping they don't tell you. All that time spent preparing fish, slaving away while the stench of your profession dents your social life, just for an uppity tuxedo chicken to choose hunger strike. Man, you know they don't get paid enough for that. Yeah. Literally the only compromise was mixing the cheap fish with the aji. As you can see, some animals are way more high maintenance than others, but some are too difficult to even exist in zoos. Think about it. Think of all the zoos you've ever been to and try to see if you can come up with any notable absences. Okay, time's up. When's the last time you saw a moose in a zoo? For a Ooh, lot of y'all, including- Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen a moose in any type of zookeeping area, yeah. Me? Probably never. You've probably seen bison, bears, bobcats, cougars. Y'all yeah. know I could speak on wolves, <laughs> but no moose. Why? Moose have specific diets, they're built like a tank and of course eat like one, and really, you can do everything right. They can still pass tense in a few years. And apparently feeding an antler warrior that can't even survive a president's term is a bad investment. So are leopard seals. You'll likely never see the op of happy feet in a zoo. Narwhals can literally die of social anxiety, so they're out. Tarsiers sometimes seppuku themselves in captivity, so that's a no-go. And they say dietary restrictions are why proboscis monkeys are rare in zoos. I call bull shark. It's definitely because Shinazi might be the most inappropriate animal to take your kids to see. And yes, my my head's here for a yeah. reason. I'm not about to catch an age restriction over an overexposed lipstick dispenser. Or they could yeah. just. Yeah. Yeah.
use fake animals, cause it's not like that hasn't happened before. In 1987, a zoo in China was exposed for painting a sun bear and presenting it yeah. as a panda. That's a sun bear, by the way. Yeah. In 2018, a zoo- Yeah, was, I showed a little bit of that in his last video too. And yeah, I don't remember that the whole controversy about that was, but yeah, they put a dude in a sun bear suit and that was very easy to tell that it was a dude in there. And Cairo did the same, except they had a donkey and zebra face. 2013, and we're back in China, except this controversy was about their resident African lion. There's a lion. Did y'all even try? But no. by far, my favorite counterfeit creatures- <laughs> And they just, they, they just take the closest thing they could find that looked like one and just went like there. Story is. That is a, that is one giant. Did y'all even try? But by far, my favorite. That is a giant head of hair for both of these dogs. Your counterfeit creature story is. These dogs are advertised as panda dogs. They're just dogs, okay? According Jesus. to Chinese state media, the zoo confirmed it dyed the dog's fur to look like pandas to fill in the blank of not having actual pandas. You know, if I took time out of my day and spent my hard-earned money to go see a panda and got this, I'd probably go and spend more. Man, they got pandas <laughs> from Timu. I can't even be mad. So obviously people are usually happy. <laughs> pandas from Timu. Wait, well, hey, to be fair, they do look fucking adorable, okay? They do. <laughs> Alright. Happy to see animals at zoos, but you ever wonder how the animals feel? Well, someone did, and a study from Nottingham Trent and Harper Adams University studied over 250 animals in zoos to see how their behaviors changed around human company. Using hours of observation and research, they found that the animal most excited to see people at zoos, and I really hope this is true, were elephants. Elephants really? showed the most positive reactions to large groups of people, becoming more active, more playful, and overall seeming to have a better time when humans were around. The other people happy animals included cheetahs, jaguars, penguins, grizzly bears, polar bears, a cow called a batang, servals, and black-tailed prairie dogs. Right. And on the other side, the animals that seemed to like human company the least were hedgehogs, ostriches, marsupials like kangaroos, ungulates like giraffes and antelopes, and probably most random of all, the tuatara. They have three eyes. I'm surprised, um, I'm surprised orcas weren't on that list, because, well, some, because from what I've seen is that some animals don't deserve to be in captivity, like, at all, or don't need to be, you know, they just don't, some of them don't, some of them are fine, some of them are just not, I don't know, it depends on the animal and apparently none of them want to see us. As for the rest, the vast majority of animals had no reaction. The study does raise an interesting question and that's how the pandemic affected zoo animals. Believe it or not, some animals actually started to miss people. The worldwide panoramic left elephants confused and disappointed, birds like kias and cockatoos missed the attention, and you even had apes like chimps actively looking for missing visitors. Damn. And while the shutdown gave us gems like penguins exploring empty aquariums or a sea lion getting introduced to a tegu, by far the best story to come out was what happened in a Japanese aquarium. You see, the eels in Tokyo Sumida Aquarium were used to people, but the pandemonium turned them back people shy, and those same eels would now hide in the sand whenever a worker or someone would walk past. The problem is, that made it almost impossible to check up on them and keep them healthy. The solution Ooh, yeah, was bad. the aquarium asked people to FaceTime their eels to refamiliarize them with people, like some huh. exposure therapy. There was a legitimate time where you could have gone on a date with an antisocial eel, and the worldwide <laughs> Panera brought a lot of bad, but this was definitely a bright spot. But now, zoos are back open, so here's some hacks to get the most out of your experience. Animals are going to be most active on cooler, cloudier days, and they usually peak as soon as the doors open. Also, you're going to want to aim for a random weekday since the less cr- I swear to God, I thought that dog was humping- or I thought that wolf was humping the other wolf. Uh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm glad it wasn't. Crowded the better. I was, I was confused for a moment. I was like, wait, maybe it's just the way, the way it's angled, and I'm glad it was just that. Try it. If you can be there the next overcast 10 a.m. on a Tuesday, I swear you'll see a different zoo. And if you're a cat person, you might want to wear some Calvin Klein. No, seriously, the Klein is a favorite for cats of all kinds, from cheetahs to cougars, from lions to leopards. Hmm. In fact, researchers have caught wild jaguars on camera by dousing the trap in obsession for men. So next time you're at the zoo and end up in big cat country, go ahead and spritz some of the Klein and see what happens. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. I imagine I'm gonna get a couple comments disappointing to me for not blasting zoos for 15 minutes, that I can't possibly care about animals if I still go to them. Here's my take. I've always said that zoos are capable of a lot of good and a lot of bad, but sure. a lot of them are an invaluable resource for conservation. 
conservation and awareness. And while I agree, there are some species that are just not built for zoos. Yep. A majority of them are there because they literally would be worse off in the wild. Yep. Chevalsky's horse was basically halfway down the grave, but it was the work of zoos that helped bring them back from the brink. Mm. Same thing with the California condor, and about a dozen more. And Sparathaw for zookeepers are overworked, underpaid, usually overqualified. Yep. And like I said, the smell isn't just something they leave at the office. Not all yep. zoos are created equal, and it's at best lazy, and at worst, almost dangerous to put them all in the same boat. Yeah, I'd definitely say, I, I agree with that. There's always, there's definitely a lot of good and bad in, in zoos. There are. <clears throat> but I'ma stop yapping, drink water, hug your mother, support your local zoo, just make sure it's accredited. Yeah. Matter of fact, give a zookeeper a hug. Who knows how much they need it. That's and I'ma real. see y'all. Yeah, any zookeepers watching this, how many y'all need a hug? <laughs> in the next one. Well, that was a really good video. I enjoyed it. Hope you guys enjoyed it too. And if you did, check out the original one, which will be in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Have a good day, y'all. Goodbye.